Hello, and welcome to Wolf's Words, a series of informational videos about parental school choice brought to you by Conduit for Commerce. I'm your host, Dr. Patrick Wolf. Today's topic is home education, commonly referred to as homeschooling. One of my former students, Dr. Angela Watson, has developed the most reliable estimate of the number of homeschoolers in America. She has pegged that number at 2 million students across the country, with 22,000 students in our state of Arkansas. In both cases, that represents about 4% of the K-12 student population. Now, there's a lot of controversy that surrounds homeschooling. Some people think it's a radical departure from traditional public schooling. And quite frankly, they think that homeschool parents are a little weird. But let's think about that. And when we do, we see that's a totally unfair characterization. First, education is simply the extension of parenting. We as parents are responsible for raising our children to be reliable adults who act responsibly and contribute to society. And education is simply one aspect of that child rearing. And if parents can provide that education within their home themselves or with assistance, why wouldn't that be a good thing? Second, we know that one size doesn't fit all in education. And homeschooling provides the maximum opportunity to customize an education for a given child's needs. And third, homeschooling actually has played a major role in our country's history. Let's look at the history of homeschooling in America. During the colonial period, home education was basically education. Children who were taught were taught in their homes, either by their parents or by hired tutors. Right now, there's a very popular movie out called Little Women. It's based on the book by Louisa May Alcott. And Louisa May was homeschooled. She and her sisters were taught by their father, Bronson Alcott, who was a very famous educator during the colonial period. Homeschooling dominated education in the United States through the first 50 years of our republic. It was only in the mid-19th century when Horace Mann, the state commissioner of education in Massachusetts, and his supporters developed the public common school model. The common schools were originally envisioned as a possible alternative to homeschooling for parents. But eventually, there was a stronger push for common public schools to replace homeschooling. By 1900, states started banning homeschooling. And by 1950, it was illegal for parents to educate their children at home in a majority of US states. The 1960s brought a lot of social changes. And one of them was the rebirth of homeschooling in America. It really caught fire in the 1970s and 80s. And by 1993, homeschooling was legal again in all 50 states, plus the District of Columbia. So why do families educate their children at home? Surveys suggest there are five main reasons. The single most popular reason for families homeschooling is that parents want to inculcate their children with a strong core set of values. Now these values range all the way across the political spectrum, from conservative Christian values to crunchy granola progressive values and everything in between. The important thing is parents want to share their value system with their children during their formative years and homeschooling gives them a prime option to do so. The second major reason that families homeschool is to deliver a specific pedagogy or curricular emphasis to their child that they think is going to be the most effective way to educate them. The third reason is for children to escape bullying, violence, and drugs in their local public schools, which too often are a scourge. The fourth reason why parents often homeschool is to educate a child with disabilities. Some children with disabilities 
are very sensitive to their surroundings and feel uncomfortable and intimidated. So where are they going to feel the most relaxed and comfortable? In their own home. That's why many homeschool families educate their children with disabilities in the home so that the children can be relaxed and open to the learning available to them. The fifth and final reason why many families homeschool is the flexibility it provides to the family and the student, which is especially important for young athletes and budding celebrities. They travel a lot to advance their career and their craft, and so they wouldn't be able to attend brick and mortar public or private schools on a regular basis. Homeschooling gives them a chance to learn on the go. This was evident a week ago when Billie Eilish became the youngest woman to win the Top Vocalist Award in, at the Grammys. And you guessed it, Billie and her brother were homeschooled their entire lives. So what happens when families choose to homeschool their children? Research on homeschooling outcomes are somewhat limited, but they tend to find a lot of positive effects of homeschooling on a variety of important student outcomes. Compared to similar students who are educated in brick and mortar schools, homeschool students tend to achieve higher on tests, including the ACT and SAT college preparation tests. They also enroll in college, persist in college, and obtain college degrees at higher rates. And perhaps surprisingly, homeschool students demonstrate higher scores on measures of social development and young adult behavior. So in the interest of full disclosure, I have to tell you that my wife and I homeschooled one of our children. Why did we only homeschool one of our children? Well, the reason was we loved him more. Okay, that was a joke. The real reason why we homeschooled our older son was because we knew that he needed the focus and consistent challenge that only homeschooling could provide. And our homeschooling experience was a great success with Alex, who now is a second year law student at a prestigious law school. And heck, he may even pursue education law as his specialty. Those are my wolf's words for this episode. And please join me for the accompanying piece where I will be interviewing a wonderful homeschool family from Northwest Arkansas. Thank you for joining me on Wolf's Words.